Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay here from Enterprise DNA. Today we're gonna to do some almost predictive analytics, right? And it's a really cool technique and um, very doable from um, from a DAX perspective. You know, it's, it's just, I guess, analytically thinking about what you want to achieve and then working through the steps in regards to how you actually do it. And so oh, that's exactly what I did basically to, to work out this insight. So the particular insight that I want to look at or, or I guess predict is I want to see, okay, well, from my customer set, we've got historical data, right? I can go back and look through time and see when they have actually purchased through time. And so in this case, uh, I'm looking at every single customer and I'm saying, okay, well, how many times did this person actually transact with us? So was it, uh, so we've got three here, could be all the way up to say 10, 20, etc. But I want to see, okay, based on the time frame that they purchase, how likely are they to repurchase at any point in the near future? It's a pretty cool insight, right? Imagine if you, you can, just from historical information, I mean, obviously it's just a prediction, it's not going to be for real, and there's lots of different intricacies around uh, when it could happen, but think about it, uh, think about how you could use this insight. You could say, okay, well, if on average, if our customer has purchased something from us 15 times over the last two years uh, and then on average they've done it every sort of 40 or 50 days or something of that nature then you could then I guess um, send the marketing or go and um, make a sales call or or make sure they see some sort of um, ad on online or something like that so there's so many great ways that you could actually utilize this even though it's not going to be perfect but at least it's uh, it gives you the ability to have somewhat of an understanding of a customers purchasing decisions so how I did it, let's go through how I did it. So in this case, uh, I looked at, first of all, I wanted to analyze, okay, well, when was the actual last date of purchase? So that's that's something we've got to start from. And so um, I first of all calculated, okay, but based on every single customer, when was the very last purchase that they made? So let's go have a look at that, uh, that, that formula. Uh, and it's not that difficult, right? All it is is like I went last date um, of the particular purchase date. So in my sales table, I have a, I have a column which is for purchase date, and if if uh, in the current context uh, if the customer is filtered, then that last date will go and retrieve the very last day per customer, right? And that, I guess that, that that's going to always show the last purchase date. So that's all I had to do for that. And then I wanted to work out, okay, well, what is the days since last purchase? Now. What I did here is ultimately I had to make a decision because this data is not actually live, it's just demo data. So I had to go and retrieve, okay, well, what is the last day that this data updated? In, in reality, if you were trying to implement this, you might be able to put today or something like that because the data will be updated, but the data was not in this case. So I had to go and figure out, okay, well, what's the last actual transaction date in my data set? Uh, and then so I just did that by a simple formula like so, where I just said, okay, well, for all, all sales, um, go and find the last, the very last date. And so that's always going to give me, in theory, today's date. And then from that, I can work out, okay, well, what uh, what is the, from that date and the date of last purchase, you can say, okay, well, when was when did this customer last, last purchase off us uh, versus the last date of purchase? And then that's what gives us our day since last purchase. And that's that's interesting, right? Because you want to know what the customer when the customer last purchased of you, because then you can comp you've got to compare that compare that to the average dis uh, time frame between purchases, and so that's how you can discover because if you've got that benchmark, you can then say, okay, well, um, you know, on on average they've purchased every sixty days, but in this case they haven't purchased for four hundred and fifty days, so something's clearly quite wrong there. Okay, so then how do they work out? This is the this is the big part of this um, of this uh, analysis. So how do they work out the average days between purchases? Well, it's a combination of things, right? It's a combination of things, and it's actually maybe simpler than what you think. I mean, you probably could actually do this a bit a bit more of a complex fashion, but I thought that you could get just as good a prediction. Might not be perfect, but just as good just by utilizing this formula. So all I did, right, was I went and uh, for every single customer, I worked out, okay, when was their last purchase versus when was their first purchase? And then I divided that by the total number of days that they transacted. 
So think about that. I said, okay, for each different customer, let's go and work out, okay, when was the very first purchase that they made? When was the last purchase that they made? And then how many days did they actually transact with us? And in theory, that is going to give you, you know, obviously it's not perfect, but it's going to give you a roundabout the average days within purchases. Because if someone comes to you on a regular basis, then that's going to actually showcase that, right? It's going to give you the average days between purchases um, in, a, in a logical way. So that's basically how I did it. And then I then uh, did another measure, I created another measure which said, okay, well, if this customer is over their estimated average days, then show me how many days they're actually over. And that is what this days above average um, column is showing. And if, if they're actually below, I haven't, um, I haven't actually, I've made it, I've made it blank so it doesn't actually show up. But just, I just, I mean, my mind explodes with what you could do with this, right? Is, is if you had, you know, you're, you're an online retailer or something, and you knew that your customer was coming to, you figured out your customer was coming to, say, every 30 days. Well, you know, leading up to that, you could send out some email marketing to them. Um, you could um, do some um, adverts on Facebook or something like that. There's just so many. And this this is, this, that's just one example. I mean, you could do the same in, in basically any any business that sells anything. Um, you know, this is this is a truly, truly great insight. So, you know, if I um, go down here, you know, we're looking at, say, this customer, this particular customer here, the average time between purchases is 98 days and they've only uh, purchased 48 days ago. So, and the other thing I did was you could match this out and you could um, say, well, are, these, are they a top customer or are they a small customer? Does it really matter that we've lost them? You know, you could really um, identify, okay, well, are our, are, our, are our customers that we make the most profit of, are they purchasing as they should be? And this is how you can actually identify it in a real-time way. Okay, so I'm going to round things off uh, with this insight. Uh, you can download uh, this resource if you like. Um, just from the Enterprise DNA uh, TV resources. Check out the description below. Just requires a small investment. Uh, if you like this uh, content, uh, definitely throw us a like on the video. Really, really appreciate it. Uh, and uh, definitely subscribe to Enterprise DNA, uh, DNA TV as well. If you want to learn uh, lots of these great uh, real, real world insights or real world scenarios uh, in using Power BI, um, then this is, the, this is the channel to be subscribed to. Okay. I will uh, speak to you again soon. Good luck.